What's up y'all? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video, um, I want to talk about a book that I think is extremely helpful, uh, really valuable, whether you're someone who is new to street photography, you're interested in it, you're just getting started, or if you've been doing it for a while, um, because we always have something to learn. And that book is Think Like a Street Photographer by Matt Stewart. If you aren't familiar with Matt Stewart, definitely look more into his work. I highly recommend it. He's a street photographer who's been shooting on the street for the last 20 years, based out of England. When you look at Matt's work, uh, there are a lot of things that stand out, but there are a few to me, and it's the way he captures humor. It's just the funny, quirky things that he captures in his scenes. I think that's a, a big part of his personality coming through because he's a pretty funny guy. It's a lot of organized chaos. I think he does a really good job of capturing a lot of things happening in one frame. And as you look through his photos, you can just keep seeing one thing after the other that catches your eye and it just makes a bigger story as a whole. I'm sure you've seen a few of his most famous photos online or just circulating somewhere. He's been featured in a handful of books, magazines, um, he has a couple books of his own. He's had gallery shows all over the world. He's very well known in the space, um, so definitely look him up, but he wrote this book. And I wanted to cover it on this channel because I read it, I've read it twice so far. The first time I read it, I did the entire thing in one sitting. I didn't want to put it down. It was really helpful, really interesting, and I immediately, I couldn't wait to pick up my camera and go shoot. So because of all the value that I get out of it, I thought it would be cool to make a video to share with you guys as well. So he covers a lot of topics in this book, uh, but the thing I love about it is that it's, he talks mostly about the, the mindset behind street photography. What's going on in your head, how you're thinking, how you're feeling. And that's such a big part of it. I feel like that makes up like 90% of street photography. Not only does he talk about the mindset, but he also covers topics like luck, having a positive attitude, getting into a flow, the ethics behind street photography, which is a good topic, composition or lack of, shooting in different weather conditions, and so much more. One of the first things too that's great about it is that it doesn't take very long to read. I think it's only around 120 pages, but a lot of it he has his photos on half the page or some of them are full spread photos. And it's just really easy to get through and read and digest. And it's just, I think it took me about an hour the first time I went through it. Um, so that's one great thing about it is it doesn't take up a ton of your time and you gain a ton of value from it. Like I said too, he's a pretty humorous guy. I think he's really funny. The way he words things and talks about things and just sees the world. So that also helps in making it an easy read too. <laughs> so in total, there are 13 chapters in this book, um, but I want you guys to actually read it. So I'm not gonna cover the, obviously the entire thing, so that'll be a way longer video. But I do just wanna talk about the first three because even the first three are just, they're all really insightful, but the first three are really good. So I figure I just kind of share my thoughts on those and talk about it and then, uh, you know, then you guys can pick it up if you're interested, but let's get into it. So the first chapter is called Think Lucky, Be Lucky. A positive mental attitude is the key to great pictures. Going out into the world to make pictures can be overwhelming. It's all a great big unknown. If you put too much pressure on yourself to make great pictures, you can become paralyzed, so give yourself an optimistic push and have hope. That's something that is such a massive part in street photography. If you're going out with the idea that you're not going to take any good photos, you're not going to see anything, think, why am I even out today? Um, you will have those bad days sometimes where you don't come away with anything, but that is part of the process. And, you know, we can help ourselves by thinking, today's going to be a good day, I'm going to see something. The whole point is keeping an open mind and thinking, I'm just going to see what I see. Um, but there's a big difference between going out with an open mind and thinking I'm not going to see anything <laughs> because then you probably won't. A positive mental attitude is the key to great photographs. If you go out expecting to see interesting pictures, you tend to be more positive and then luckier. He says, having a positive disposition is necessary for this activity that we call street photography because, to quote photographer Alex Webb, Street photography is 99.9% .9 about failure. 
which is so true because you go out most of the time you don't get anything great you take photos you might be happy with some but you know there's always those photos that you remember and there's going to be a lot more photos that you miss that you don't like that you aren't happy with than ones that you that you absolutely love so we can only we can help ourselves just by being positive and understanding that that's all part of the process If at first you don't succeed, practice, practice, practice. Street photography is the result of hard work rather than luck. You have to commit, spend hours on the street, and learn the art of saying yes as opposed to saying no if you want to succeed. He shares a lot more tips and tricks in this chapter as well, but the whole premise of just being out there as much as possible will not only help you improve, improve your eye, and just improve as a street photographer, but you'll also increase your chances of coming across those lucky scenes. In other words, the amount of luck you have is determined by how much time you spend on the street. He says, Never does that old maxim, the harder I practice, the luckier I get, ring truer than with street photography. Pictures, especially the really good ones, don't come around very often. In a good year, I might come away with 10 keepers, ones that are special. They're difficult to come by, but if you're out there trying, you are far more likely to get lucky. Bad weather, good photos. Don't be a fair weather photographer. Always carry a camera with you on good weather days, rainy days, snowy days, windy days, because you never know what might come your way. This is also really good information because, I mean, of course it's easy to go out and shoot on a nice day. When it's sunny, there's no wind, the light's perfect, all that, but when you only shoot on sunny days, you're also discounting the opportunity that can come from shooting on those other days, like the foggy days, the snowy days, the rainy days, um, because a lot can come from those too. A quote from this chapter, he says, Some of the best pictures come about when it's raining because people do funny things, like cover their head with a newspaper in a futile attempt to keep dry, or huddle under an overhang and peer out every so often. You never know what's around the next corner, even when the weather is bad. In this chapter, he also goes on to talk about the idea of always having a camera on you, no matter what the weather is, uh, no matter where you're going, because you never know what might come your way. I liked this quote too. He said, if you don't have a camera on you at all times, you're just someone who saw some stuff and told people about what you saw. And he shares a story about one of his favorite photos that he took in this chapter. It's this dog that looks like he's driving the car. And this one became really famous. And he tells a story about how he was hungover and he went to walk to a pharmacy to get Alka-Seltzer. And it was like a rainy, foggy day. It was gross out, but he still just grabbed his camera just in case. And sure enough, he saw this scene and it became a really famous photo and if he wasn't carrying his camera, he wouldn't have seen it. So this is just another really good tip, um, just to always have your camera on you, no matter where you're going. This one's called Get Into The Flow. Find yourself and get lost. Being out on the street making pictures is a time to be in your head. It's a chance to leave everything else behind. In one sense, you're absorbed by what you're doing but at the same time, you're totally aware of what's happening, tuned in and switched on. This is such a massive part in street photography, and for me especially, I resonated a lot with this because I think for a lot of us, street photography is really therapeutic. It's almost like a meditative process where you go out, you can forget about everything that's going on, but at the same time, you're just really tuned into what, what's around you and the atmosphere and your immediate surroundings and you're taking your focus off of whatever is going on and you're completely putting it onto the street and looking for scenes and things that are happening around you. Another great quote that I liked from the chapter, give yourself that time to go out and look because as well as looking, you will also feel and feeling is a very important part of the process too. How you respond, not just physically, but mentally. Something else interesting too with this is that he talks about the use of headphones and he says he doesn't recommend it because, especially with the state of being tuned into your surroundings, you want to be able to hear things. Because that's such a big part when you're out shooting, is that you might hear something off in the distance that sounds interesting, and you go over to it to see what it is, and you may end up with a photo out of that. 
But if you're listening to music, if you have noise cancelling headphones in, you might not hear that thing and then you might miss out on a potentially good photo. Later on in the book he gives an example where he overheard a conversation that two kids were happening and the kid told his friend to do a somersault and he heard that and went over to see what was going on and then he took one of his most memorable photos where this kid looks like he's frozen in the air but he says if he was wearing headphones he would have missed that. Something else I like that he does throughout the book too is he has these little they're called try this. He has these little tips um, along the chapters that tell you certain things to do and give a try when you're out shooting and they're really valuable so that's something else I like as well. I know I said I would talk about three chapters but I'm going to include another one because I thought this one was really important too. It's called keep it simple. Don't be blinded by technology. Don't get bogged down by the technical stuff. It's good to know the basics, but don't let them get in the way when you spot something interesting on the street. If you're more focused on your camera than the scene itself, you might just lose the shot. This chapter is really valuable because he shares his settings that he uses based on the weather conditions, and he talks more about how exactly that. Your settings can get in the way, whatever camera you're using, lens you're using can just bog you down. If you're more focused on the technical stuff, you're not actually present in the moment and watching for different scenes to unfold. In another chapter in the book too, he also talks about the idea of using whatever works for you. It's going to be different for everybody based on your personality, what you're inspired by, what you like to shoot, and he said basically don't let anybody tell you what to do. If you're someone that likes to use a long lens, then use a long lens. If that's genuinely how you feel your personality comes across in your work. He says, street photography is not about rules. Don't let people tell you what to do. Do what feels right for you and your voice will come through. So don't feel like you have to use a 28mm or a 35mm just to make street photography or traditional street photography. You can do whatever feels right for you. And he finishes off this chapter but with a quote from Elliot Erwitt where he says, all the technique in the world doesn't compensate for the inability to notice. There is so much more that I could share from this book, but like I said, I wanted this to kind of just be an introduction to the book, kind of just scratch the surface, um, and I highly recommend that you guys pick it up if you're interested. It's been really beneficial to me. I've learned a lot from it, and it's a, it's a fun read. It's not too long, like I said, and it's cheap too. At the time of recording this, it's only $20, and I just grabbed it off of Amazon. So I highly recommend it. I highly recommend checking out Matt's work, watching his videos on YouTube because there's a handful of them of him shooting, talking about his process, um, he, there's different interviews with him, he has a lot to offer, he's a really good teacher, and um, I think he's a great resource to learn from if you haven't heard of him yet, so definitely check him out. And he just includes a lot of his work in this book as well, so you can take some time to really dive into his photos and look at them all, and it's nice to pair it with his examples that he gives and with his words. So overall, just really, a really well done book, um, and I highly recommend it. Alrighty, so that's going to be it for this video. Hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below, share your thoughts if you already have this book, if there are any other ones like this that you think would be helpful uh, to anyone in the comments, and to myself included, because I'm always, I'm always looking for new books to read. If you made it to the end, thanks so much for watching. Get out and shoot, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya. Thank you.